Hello and welcome to an introduction to programming using Visual Basic exercises for beginners. In this exercise we are going to create furniture order application. A furniture manufacturer makes two types of furniture, chairs and sofas. The price per chair is $350 and price per sofa is $925 and there's a 5% sales tax. We are to write a program that creates an invoice for the order. After the data has been entered, the user can display an invoice in a list box by pressing the process order button and then the user can click on the clear order form button to clear all the text boxes and the list box. And of course there's a quit button that exits the program. The invoice number consists of the capitalized first two letters of the customer's last name followed by the last four digits of the zip code. The customer name is input with the last name first, followed by a comma and a space and the first name. However, the name is displayed on the invoice in the proper order, meaning first name and last name. The generation of the invoice number and the reordering of the first and last names should be carried out by function procedures. So here is our form. It has a few text boxes. In the first one, the user enters last name, comma, space, and first name, then street address, then city, state, and zip address, number of chairs ordered, and number of sofas ordered, then clicks the process order button and displays the invoice in the list box, and clear order form button obviously clears everything. So I'm in my Visual Studio 2015. I have the form already prepared, just like you saw it. So let's get coding. I'll double click the process order button and I'll go to my sub procedure for the click process order button. Now the first thing as always is to declare some variables and we have three constants that are not going to change. That's the chair price, the sofa price and the sales tax. So these can be constants and declared in the form level so we have access to them throughout the whole form and all the procedures and functions. So here are my constants, they are all doubles and they all have values that were given to us from the assignment. So now we can go to the button process order click event and start coding. And again we need to declare a few variables but this time they are local to the sub procedure. And we need the variables from the input. If you look at the form again you can see that they have the name, street, zip, and chairs orders and sofas orders. So those we need to declare. So here's my variables. I have the customer name coming from the txt name.txt street, which is the txt address.txt, and city state zip, which is the txt city.txt. And these are all strings. And we have our chairs and sofas, and those are integers because we are ordering obviously certain number of sofas and chairs. So now I have to declare a few more variables that will hold the results of the calculations. Now we need to calculate the total amount due for the invoice, we need to calculate the total tax for the order and the order price, which would be the order price before the tax is applied. Alright, so here they are, total due, total tax and order price and all three of them are double. So now the first thing we need to do is to validate the input. We need to make sure that the user entered the customer name in the proper format, meaning that the last name was entered first, then comma, space, and then the first name. We also have to make sure that the street and city state zip was also entered, and we have to make sure that chairs and sofas are an integer, that they are not invalid characters. So in order to do all that, I'm going to create validate input function that will return true or false based on obviously whether the input is valid or invalid. So here is my function. It takes three arguments. It takes the customer name, street and city, state and zip. You notice that the arguments do not take the chairs and sofas. That's because we will be actually evaluating the text boxes themselves rather than the variables. And if the text box holds an actual integer, then we will assign that integer to our chairs or sofas variables. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the name is in correct format. So that means that it has to contain a 
comma and a space after the comma and it has to be of certain length because we cannot allow just the, the comma for example or only one letter or something like that we have to have at least one letter for the last name one letter for the first name we need to have comma and a space so that's four letters at least so first let's check if the name contains comma and a space and to do that I'm going to use an if statement and I'm going to use the negative I'm going to check if it does not contain comma and a space so if not the customer name that contains and we are checking for the comma and a space or if the customer name that length is less than four then we have a problem obviously it's an invalid input and we'll inform the user in a message box that the input is invalid and ask the user to correct it so if the name doesn't contain comma in a space or is too short we'll display the message box and we will return false the input is invalid another invalid input would be if the street and the city and state and zip are blank if the user did not enter them so we'll do an else if statement and we'll check if the street is empty or the city state and zip is empty then once again we'll inform the user in a message box that it's an invalid input and we will return false because again this is invalid input and last we have to make sure that the user entered numbers into the text box for the chairs and sofas so we will check if the text boxes contain a numeric character so we will do another else if statement and again we will ask the negative else if if not is numeric and we'll ask for the txt chairs that text so if the input in the text box is not numeric or if it's not numeric for the sofa then once again this is invalid input and we'll tell the user to enter a valid one and once again since this is invalid input we will return false so if this is not true and if this is not true and if this is not true then we can assume that we have a valid input the user entered numbers for the chairs and sofas entered the name in a correct format and the city and the address was entered as well so we can return true so we will do an else statement and return true so this is our validate input and we can come over here to our sub procedure for the process order click event and we can call this function and if it validates we can proceed with the execution of the program so we will put it in an if statement if validate input returns true and we'll pass all the arguments to it so if it validates as true like I said we can proceed and the first thing since our chairs contain valid number and our sofas contain valid number we can assign an integer to our variables chairs and sofas so our chairs equals since they are integer will convert it to integer the txt chairs dot text and the same for the sofas so since we have valid input now we can perform the calculations and calculate the total due the total tax and order price and I'm going to create another function that will do just that so I create a function called calculate that will return a double that will be the total amount due however within this calculate function I'm also going to calculate the total tax and also the order price however since we are only returning one value for the total due I'm going to pass the total tax and order price by reference meaning that whatever change to these variables I make into the calculate function the change will also apply to my variables in the sub procedure for the order click event so in order to perform the calculations I need to pass the chairs and sofas as arguments to this function because I need them to calculate the order price and these are going to be passed as arguments by value because we don't want to change them over here whatever the user enters as the number of chairs and sofas we don't want to alter that in our calculate function we only want to alter the calculations that we make so I'm going to pass total tax and other price as by reference doubles and I will change the values for these within my calculate function so our other price will equal simply multiplying the chairs by the chair price and adding the sofas or the order for the sofas 
multiplied by the sofa prices. So now when I have my order price, this is the order price before tax is applied. So now I can calculate the total tax and it simply equals the order price multiplied by the sales tax. You can see it up here, that's our constant. And last, we can return the total due, which would be the order price plus the total tax. So we will return order price plus the total tax. So now when we have our calculation, we can come up here in our if statement and we can call this function and assign the value to our total due. So our total due will equal, and we will call the calculate function and pass, you can see in the IntelliSense, it asks for the chairs, sofas, and by reference, the total tax, and, and our by reference, the other price. All right, so we have our total due, and now we can deal with the invoice ID. Remember, it's supposed to be the two letters of the last name, and remember that the order form takes the last name as first. It's in a format of last name, comma, space, and first name. So we take two letters of the name, and then the last four digits from the zip code. And I'm going to create a function to create the invoice ID, and I'll just call it invoice number. So here is my function, and it will return a string, which will be the string of the invoice ID. And in order to create the invoice ID, I need to pass two arguments to it. Remember the ID consists of the customer name, or two, two first letters of the customer name, and the last four digits of the zip code. So I'm passing the customer name and the city state zip as the arguments to this function. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find the last four digits of the zip code. So I'm going to create a variable called zip digits, and it's going to be a string. And to find the last four digits, it's fairly simple. Our zip digits equals, we will call the city state zip variable, and we will only ask for the last four characters. So we'll do the substring, and the last four characters are the length of the whole word minus four, because we are looking only the last four characters. So our city state zip dot length, so this is the length of the city state zip string, but we only want the last four, so we will do negative or minus four. And this will give us the last four digits. And now we can return the zip digits, the last four digits that we just got, combined with the first two characters of the customer name. And the customer name, the first two characters, are again a substring that start at zero, or at the beginning of the word, and then comma two, because we only want two characters. And the exercise asks for these characters to be uppercase, so we will convert them to upper, and we will concatenate the zip digits. So again, I can come back to my process order click event, and I can create a variable, I'll just create up here, that I will call invoice ID. So now I can assign a value to it simply by calling our invoice number function, and the value returned from that function will be assigned to our invoice ID. And obviously the function is asking for the customer name and the zip code as an argument, so I'll pass those. And once the return value is assigned to our invoice ID, now I can reverse the name. Remember the exercise is asking for the invoice to be displayed as first name and last name. However, the input is the last name first and then the first name. So I will have to reverse the name. So I'm going to create another variable after our invoice ID, it's going to be a string and I'll just call it reverse name. And to reverse the name, I will create a function called reverse name. And the function will return the string, which will be the string of the first name and last name. So in order to use this function, I need to pass an argument to it. And that argument I need is the customer name because that's the name I'm going to be working with. Now I need to declare a few variables within the function. The first one will be the first name, the next one will be the last name, and one important one is going to be an integer that will determine where the comma is positioned. Because remember, I need to split the word, or the one line, or the one string, by the comma, and then switch the first half for the second half. All right, so here are my uh, variables. And to find the comma position within the string, it's fairly simple we're going to use the name dot index of. This is how it's gonna look. Our comma position will equal the customer name dot index of. And you can see that it reports a zero based index of the first occurrence of the specified character. 
and the character we are looking for is a comma. So this will give us the index where we will split the string. So now our first name will simply equal our customer name dot substring and we will split it where the comma is and we will add plus two to it. And the plus two is because there's the comma and after that is the space. And we want only the actual letters after the comma. So this will give us our first name and our last name will equal the customer name dot substring and this time we want it from the beginning of the string so position zero up to where the comma is so up to the comma position. So now we have our first name and last name and we can return the string so we will return our first name and then concatenate let's say comma space and the last name. So now after our invoice ID we can assign a value to our reverse name and it will equal the return value from the reverse name function and it's asking for the customer name as an argument. Alright so now we are ready to display the output and the output is going to be displayed in our list box and to do that I'm going to create a sub procedure called display bill. Since it's a sub procedure it doesn't return any value and you can see that we pass in all the variables as parameters to our display bill sub procedure because we are going to work with each of them. And to display anything in our list box it's a matter of simply using the items.add and then we will add a header for each line and append a value from our variables to it. So this is my sub procedure as you can see it displays the invoice number which is the invoice ID, it displays the customer's name and the reverse name in other words the first name comma last name it displays the street, the city, state and zip, and it displays the chairs, the number of chairs and sofas, and then the other price, which is the price before taxes, then the actual sales tax, and then the total price. And those are formatted as currency, obviously because they are in dollars. So now I can call this sub procedure from our process order click event. So after our reverse name, I'll simply call the display bill. Again, there is no value, so it's not assigned to any variable we will simply display everything and you can see that it's asking for the chairs so fast the total due and all the other variables as well so I'm gonna pass them as arguments right there all right so we're almost finished what we have to do next is for the other two buttons which is the quit and the clear and to quit it's obviously simply me dot close which will close the form and to clear everything we can simply use the something like txt chairs dot text equals empty or lst dot display dot items dot clear and we could go through each of those text boxes but let me just show you quickly something a little more cooler than going uh, one line at a time and we're going to loop through each of those text boxes and clear it at the same time so I'm going to delete that and to do that we are going to like I said loop through controls and because text box is a form control so we will do a for each and I'll assign a value of the type of the control to a variable I'll just call it CTRL and we are looping in controls of the form of type and the particular type we're interested in is text box so we are looping through each text box on the form and when we find one we'll assign it to a CTRL and we can clear it. So instead of going one text box at a time we'll do a little loop like this and we can clear each of them at the same time. However this does not include the list box because this is again of the type text box only so at the end I will clear the list box separately and after everything is cleared we can do txt name dot focus. So our mouse cursor is back to our name and we can create another order. Alright so this is all the code we need let's run it and first let's check the input validation so I'll click process order and you can see that it's asking for invalid name because that's the first error that it encountered. So let me just say it's gonna be Smith comma John and you notice I didn't put a space in there so if I click process order I still get invalid name make sure names are separated by comma which they are but there's also a space that is needed. So now if I click it moves to the invalid street because that one is not entered. So I will do one two three main street and I'll click next and now it says the city is invalid so it's a big city and one two three four five is the zip code 
actually I forgot the state so let's do New York for example and if I click process order now it's the invalid number of other chairs or sofas so let's say I order three chairs and for sofas I'll put A in there once again it's invalid so I'll put three click process order and here is our order you can see that the invoice number is SM which is the first two letters of the name and 2345 which is the last four digits of the zip code everything's displayed correctly for our address and name we order three chairs and three sofas and the order price for these are 3825 and we can verify all these values so we know that our cost per chair is 350 so we ordered three of them which is $1050 and three sofas is $925 each so let's do that 925 and we'll add the 1050 for the chairs and the total order is 3825 you can see that is correct now let's calculate the tax which is 5% so multiplied by 0 0.05 and it's $191.25 so that is correct and now we add it together will get $4,016.25 and you can see that is correct so now when I click clear order form you can see everything cleared and the cursor is in the customer name text box and if I click quit everything quits so this is working correctly I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video